Right at nine, traveling this Labor Day weekend. What to look out for and how you can stay safe. Also, a Peoria COVID-19 testing site is now back open. A look at those numbers and the transmission rates in our area. But first, some breaking news for you tonight. There is now a heavy police presence in the area near the In-N-Out Grocery and Liquor Store in Peoria. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Shelby Roberts. That's on Northeast Jefferson Street, and we're continuing to follow this story. As it sounds right now, Wayne Street and Northeast Adam Street have been blocked off with crime scene tape. Peoria police are investigating that incident. Advanced Medical Transport is also on scene. We do have a crew right there on scene working to get more details. As soon as that information becomes available, we'll share that with you. We turn now to our state capitol. Governor J.B. Pritzker saying after monitoring the numbers over the past few days, he says it seems that cases of COVID-19 are flattening. But the governor also says he wants to make sure the state is heading in the right direction before lifting any current mitigations. He says this includes monitoring the metrics for state schools. According to the Illinois Department of Public Health's website, 81 schools are reporting outbreaks, including more than five in central Illinois. As kids are getting back to school and some are just back in school, this is their first week. Uh, and it's important for us to monitor very closely as they're uh, interacting with one another. And we're talking about teachers and superintendents and administrators and other people that work in schools, the parents that interact with the school, not to mention the kids themselves that we're trying to protect. The governor says the number could be as high as some schools have not reported numbers to the IDPH. And we're about to take a look at the COVID-19 testing site at the Peoria Civic Center. It is now back open. Health officials reopened that site with the recent surge of the Delta variant in the area. This comes as the state of Illinois is under a high community transmission rate. As you can see on this map here, the entire state is in red. That means the transmission of the virus is more likely, according to experts. The state confirmed more than 30,000 new cases of the virus are here and 178 virus related deaths since last Friday. Here's a breakdown of COVID-19 numbers reported in our area. Tri-County health officials are reporting 140 new and probable cases since Friday. Peoria County seeing one more virus-related death. McLean County seeing 23 new cases, but no new deaths. Right now, 47% of the Tri-County area and 52% of McLean County has been fully vaccinated. Local infectious disease specialists warn of a virus common in young children that has similar symptoms to COVID-19. Doctors tell us they're seeing a spike in respiratory syntical virus or RSV. Medical experts say that RSV is highly contagious and most kids will get it by the time they're adults. It infects the nose, throat and lungs, and it's one of the leading causes of pneumonia in babies. Those symptoms do include coughing, labored breathing, as well as fever. Well, those situations where they're breathing hard and fast, you see their chest tugging in or caving in, uh, they feel like they can't get their air, their lips are turning blue, all those situations would be serious um, and they should be seen at that point by a health care provider. And if kids have RSV-like symptoms, doctors say it's important to get children tested for COVID to prevent it from spreading. In other news, Governor Pritzker giving schools a little more time to implement new COVID-19 guidelines. Alongside IDPH, Dr. Uh, the Director Ezeke, Ngozi and Zeke, excuse me, the governor announcing today a two-week extension for vaccine requirements for those in high-risk settings. All health care workers, including nursing home workers and all teachers, will now be required to be vaccinated by September 19th. The governor says the two-week extension will help schools and hospitals implement the new measures. Economists and the White House were hoping for strong numbers for the Labor Department today, but instead what they got were less than robust hiring, showing that the surge in the Delta variant may be hurting the U.S. economy. Lauren Blanchard has more from Washington.
There's no question the Delta variant is why today's job report isn't stronger. A weak jobs report from the Labor Department. I was hoping for a higher number. On Friday, the unemployment rate fell slightly to 5.2 percent, and far below expectations, just 235,000 jobs were added in August. In July, that number was over a million. And I would not calculate this as, as the uh, or, or describe this as the economy slowing down. I would describe this as we continue to be consistently moving forward. Fears over the Delta variant may be keeping some from jobs where they have to come in contact with others. Hospitality jobs remained unchanged and retail jobs declined. I think the Delta variant really did kind of slow some of the momentum in the economy, no question about it. Hiring ticked up in transportation, manufacturing, education, and health. But despite a demand for new homes, a drop in construction. Companies are in hiring mode. They want to hire. They cannot find workers. The president and Democrats say trillions in congressional spending is needed to help keep the economy moving forward. It's about investing in America's future. Not about short-term stimulus. This goes the wrong direction for the problems we have, and it would fuel further inflation. Why do it? A holiday for many. Monday is also when, for seven and a half million people, the extra three hundred dollars in federal unemployment will run out. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. Well, take a good look at your screen here. The Peoria Police Department is asking for your help finding this woman. 21-year-old Sky Kellington was last seen around 4 a.m. this morning near the intersection of Main and Monroe Streets. Police do describe her as a white female, 5 feet 4 inches tall, with blue eyes and long black hair. Kellington was last seen wearing a black crop top and black shorts. If you've got any information about her whereabouts, you are asked to call the Peoria Police Department at the number at the top of your screen. Well, as we enter the holiday weekend, a lot of people are expected to travel despite an increase in COVID-19 cases. WYZZ's Annie Kate has a look at the local travel trends. While the lockdowns are over, the pandemic is not. As the Delta variant spreads, I asked what travel trends we can expect this Labor Day weekend. Jean Olson, director of airports at the Peoria International Airport, says there are 41 departing flights over Labor Day weekend. He says that means two to 3,000 passengers will take off from PIA, which is not a lot compared to its past record-breaking months. He says with Allegiance recently added destinations, flyers are choosing that route. But overall, Olson says travel should be pretty safe. In terms of how crowded that's going to be, it's, it's not really very crowded. <laughs> uh, we're at about 87% of our seats that we had compared to pre-COVID. You have to wear a mask inside the airport, and, and that's independent from the governor's declaration because we've been under a federal mask mandate. Olson says airlines are reporting less advanced booking for flights this fall. He says it's most likely due to the Delta variant, but also the time of year. Olson tells me that things are looking much better from 2020, but they're still not quite at the capacity they were at in 2019. Reporting in Peoria, I'm Annie Kate, WMBD News. And as some people take flight, others are hitting the road for this upcoming holiday weekend. Illinois State Police estimate millions of drivers will be heading out for the Labor Day weekend. Troopers are warning with more cars on the concrete comes more chances for crashes. They say they'll be patrolling this weekend, watching out for what they're calling the fatal fours that contribute to car wrecks. ISP says that the fatal fours include DUIs, eating distress eating as well as distracted driving and not wearing seat belts. We want people to enjoy their holiday weekend, but we want them to be vigilant while driving. We want them to watch for motorists on the side of the roadway. Uh, we want them to follow the law. We want them to not speed, um, drive distracted and wear their seat belts. So hopefully everyone will do that safely this weekend. And Deputy John Schallenberger with the Tazewell County Sheriff's Office says 30% of traffic deaths on Labor Day weekend in 2019 involved a drunk driver. He tells us if you plan to drink, plan ahead and have a designated sober driver or contact a ride sharing service. A local animal shelter says that they are now facing multiple crises and they now need your help. A board member with the Humane Society of Fulton County tells us that they desperately need financial assistance and they need people to foster and to adopt. Lewis Elrod says that their low-cost spay and neuter providers in Springfield can no longer accommodate them. 
He says that now their vet bills are three to five times higher than before, and they've also lowered their adoption fees to clear the shelter. We have roughly around 150 cats right now, and our foster homes are full, our shelters full. We're needing to make room for new animals. So we're also paying more for veterinary costs, but we're also offering these animals at a reduced rate in order to try to hopefully incentivize people to get them into homes. And if you're interested in donating, you can visit our website, ciproud.com. Chief Meteorologist Chris Yates joins us now. It's good to have you back in studio with mm -hmm. us. We know you were enjoying Friday Night Football. That was a great night. Feeling a lot like fall. This